So a few weeks ago, I shared with you how I would learn DevOps in 2024. And as some of you know, I am a huge advocate of hands-on learning. So today, I wanted to discuss a capstone project, which will teach you all the DevOps principles. So this will be a series. Consider this part one. But today, we'll look at the overall project, what structure I'm going to follow, and all the steps that we'll need to build our DevOps capstone project. Hi, I'm Rishabh. This is Rishabh in Cloud, and welcome to the channel. As I said, this will be a series, so make sure you're subscribed and like and comment for the algorithm. So let's get started. So this was the roadmap that I shared. You know, you have your fundamentals, which includes Git, Linux, networking. You have your infrastructure and configuration. Then you have CI, CD, and containerization, along with monitoring and observability. So we will cover basically this part with our capstone project. Again, I'll link down to the video of the roadmap itself in the description, but let's go over the capstone project. So here is the DevOps capstone project, and I'll just increase the text size so that it's readable. So a sample application will be provided to you and you can go to the repository. Again, links will be in the description, but what I have built is a DevOps QR code. So it includes the front end built with Next.js, uses Fast API Python framework for the API itself, and then AWS S3 or any other cloud storage like Azure Blob Storage or GCP Bucket can be used for storing the QR code. And your goal is to apply all the DevOps practices to this existing repository, like containerization, CI CD, observability, and monitoring. So for the project itself, let me go to my GitHub repo that is available. So you will be given, so this is where you will begin. So I recommend you fork this repo. You'll have an API folder, which consists of the fast API code. You have your front end Next.js. This is what the user will interact with. So what happens is you'll have your API that will create the QR code. So let me open up the canvas here and let's go down. So what we have is front end, which is in next JS. We have our back end, which is fast API Python. So what happens is the user comes in, right? They will enter a URL. So what the service does, as you can see under the application, we have a front end, which is a web application where users can submit their URL. And we use our backend to generate a QR code and provide it to the user. So the user comes in, submits a URL. Our Next.js front end uses our fast API backend to generate a QR code and store it in a cloud storage. So this we'll call it cloud bucket, which acts as storage, right? So here the QR code will be stored. And this is also what will be returned to our Next.js front end. Again, this will be via the backend we have built. So this is the right flow of things. So you get the idea what our project is. Now, what we have to do as you can see, there are no containers, so no doc Docker file exists right now. So we'll have to create containers using Docker. We'll also have to set up CI CD to deploy those Docker images to Docker Hub. We'll also have to deploy a Kubernetes cluster to a cloud provider and then deploy our containers to that cluster. So if I go back to our steps, you can see on the left-hand side, the first step is containerization. So we'll have to create Docker files. The second step, as I said, is the CI CD, which will be writing a CI CD pipeline to automate the deployment of the containers once we update our Docker files. So this will exist in GitHub Actions since I'll be using GitHub. You're free to use any other DevOps tool for CI CD. So it can be Azure DevOps or it also could be GitLab or Jenkins. So once we are done with step two, which is the CI CD pipelines for our Docker images, we'll have to create Kubernetes YAML files, which we'll then use to deploy to our Kubernetes cluster, which will exist in a cloud provider. So the popular ones are AWS EKS, Azure has AKS, and then Google has GKE, which is basically the step four. So Kubernetes setup uh, with our cloud provider, 
Then step five is container deployment. So once we have all of our Kubernetes bits and Docker bits ready, we have to deploy our containers to, to our Kubernetes cluster in the cloud. So the front end and API. Now, the sixth step is the interconnectivity, which means that the user flow that we built here, right? So this should work. So we have to make sure our front end container can talk to our back end container and our back end can talk to our cloud bucket. Then we also have the option to set up Kubernetes with IAC. So remember step four, where we have to set up our Kubernetes cluster in the cloud, we can use tools like Terraform or Pulumi to set up a Kubernetes cluster. So IAC is also one of the important principles within DevOps, which means infrastructure as code. So if I have to create, so what we'll do is we'll have, this is our project, right? So we'll have Docker images of our front end and back end. So this is Docker, Docker, GitHub Actions. So we'll use GitHub Actions to deploy these Docker images to Docker Hub. So I'm just gonna create a diagram for the entire project that I just told you about. So Docker Hub, let me make this bigger. Actually, let's let's move this down. Let's move it here and we'll use GitHub Actions. Let's move the container images on top. Let's get rid of that. So this GitHub Action will deploy our images, which is the front end, front end, Docker file, back end Docker file. So these two images, once we have created the Docker file, we'll use GitHub Actions to deploy it to Docker Hub. So this is the CI CD of Docker. Then what we'll have is Kubernetes cluster and we'll use Terraform to deploy this. And this is in the cloud. There we go. And then we'll use the YAML files to deploy our Docker Hub images to the Kubernetes cluster. And we'll also have to set up the ingress and the networking so that users can visit our front end website to create QR codes. So that is the project, the DevOps capstone project in a nutshell. Again, all of the instructions are available on the DevOps devops.guide. So if you go to the DevOps capstone project, everything that I just told you is kind of mentioned there. So as I said in the beginning, this is a series. So this is just part one. In the next part, we'll create Docker files for our front end and the back end API. So I hope you liked this video. Make sure to comment, like for the algorithm, and let's build our DevOps project. Peace.